What's up everyone and welcome back to Motorsport Manager. Here we are, episode 10 I believe, and we are at the start of a brand new season. Last time out it was extremely close and we somehow lost the Drivers' Championship by about 4 points in the end. So it was quite eventful, but here we are, second season, very secure. We're just about to jump into our pre-season and design next year's car. So let's get straight into that now. We've got another 7 million from Darren Luff, which is what we gathered from last year during the season, which I think should be okay. So if we look at the engine supplier, I think I'm going to go for Masalt because their fuel efficiency is better. So we'll go with that. In terms of the fuel supplier, I think we will... I think we're going to go straight up for Imperial Petroleum. It's a 1 million more which brings us up to 2.5 million but it's got good fuel efficiency then if we take a look onto the next page we have materials which will cost 5 million and then brake supplier which will be like three and a half so I could go medium there and then max out on that and then that's not too bad of course there's 13 million we'll still have about 8 million left which is pretty good in fact we could go three and a half maybe that cost us 15 no I think we'll go 13.6 that's a decent amount the car's not too bad it's not brilliant either obviously but we're gonna spend that we should have around seven eight million left so let's go a couple of days and see if anything happens so we're here on the driver screen as you can see two of our drivers contracts have expired and looks like Alexa Pernet actually does want to talk to us which is good so we're going to have to offer around about the same as last time, as we know she wasn't very happy last time out when we offered her less. So we're going to go straight out, offer her pretty much this, and I'm hoping she'll be happy and she'll actually extend. Okay, so it looks as if Panette wasn't very happy with the wages. Literally, we can only put it up to a million, and that's the max. That is a lot, and I think we would lose quite a bit of money throughout the season. So I'll offer that to her, see what she says, but I'll look elsewhere as well. Seeing as we've got around about 8 million at the moment, I think I'm actually going to spend tw uh, not 12 million, 2.2 million on this scouting facility here. It will unlock us more drivers, which we do need. And I don't really want to be spending a million on per net each week, even though realistically, she's probably going to be one of the best that we can get. We could just concentrate all out on Will Hume, maybe get a lower down driver with good marketability, and then concentrate on Will Hume for the upcoming season. So we actually just had an email to say that Panette's contract has expired altogether, which means that she no longer drives for us at all. So I'm going to approach her again, and I'm thinking maybe we could offer her a little bit less now, because obviously she doesn't have any like team at all. So if we offer her everything else, which is pretty good, we'll go really high on the signing on feeds to really try and get her to join. Same with the bonus as well. Maybe then if we've got less on the wages, she'd be a bit more inclined to join. So we're gonna go we're gonna go really low. 495,000. Hopefully she'll accept that, but we'll wait and see. Okay, so she is actually insulted. We're gonna up it to 708,000. And then that's it. That is literally all we're gonna offer. Just received an email about car improvability. If we spend one and a half million, our improvability will go up by one. To be fair, that looks pretty decent to me, and we do have the money, so I think I'm going to spend that and make our improvability better. Alexia Pernet turned down the contract, so I guess we're going to have to look elsewhere for a driver this season. So, on the driver situation, we're actually really struggling to find someone else to kind of fill the role so far like we everybody else here is obviously pretty bad shen Ki, this person here not exactly fantastic and yeah it's gonna be a struggle that's all i'm gonna say we might have to actually do a couple of races with literally the stock driver and then wait till we get our scouting facility to sign someone else anyway here we are now it's time to do our livery for the 2017 season i'm thinking i might change it up a bit this year you know, the colour scheme, I'm not too sure about 
the, the pink. It's, it's okay, but it's nothing too special. But I think I'm definitely going to mix it up a little bit. So the red could turn into orange. The orange actually does look quite nice. So I think, I think I'm going to make my primary color orange this year. I'm, I'm feeling a bit of a kind of old false India vibe. White, orange and green. I feel that looks quite nice. If we just have a look at it on some other cars. That looks quite nice, I guess. It could be an option. Maybe if that was white and then the trim was green. Yeah, that looks quite good, that. And then the final bit is black. Well, let's see what it looks like if I change that around. Could have that green as well, or even orange. I think I might change it to green, actually. So, we're going to change that to green. I think our sponsor colours are good as well. And, yeah, I think we're good to go. This is the new look of Predator Racing for the new year. Wayne Bellows has come over to us and we've had a breakthrough with our fuel supplier which would give us plus one fuel efficiency. To be fair, seeing as we have a decent amount of money, I think I'm going to accept that as well. It should save us in races as well if we don't need to refuel as much. It should save us quite a lot of time in pit stops. So after all this time, our new car has been completed so we can jump into pre-season testing. I'm really not expecting anything special at all here. Obviously, Will Kim will be doing the better out of our two drivers because our other one, Bindala, is, uh, or Bindala, isn't exactly fantastic, as you can see on half a star. And yeah, we've got gearbox issues. We're down in 16th and 18th. Could be another tough season. So we'll just have to wait and see how everything goes. Now it's time to do our targets for the season. Obviously, this will change how much money we get per race. Last time out, we did finish fifth, and we started off the season extremely strong. I'm not sure if we can actually do the same this year, but we may as well go for it. We only want to improve as each year goes on, so I'm going to go for it fifth. Hopefully, it will happen. If not, we might end up getting sacked. To be fair, I think the key thing for this first race is purely reliability. So what I'm going to do is only concentrate on one car, which will be Will Hume's car because he's obviously a lot better than our other driver, for this one at least. Get the reliability of the gearbox and the engine up as much as we can because those repairs do take a long time during the race. The others can be done relatively quickly, so we'll just concentrate on that. I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get done in 11 days, but hopefully it's a decent amount and we should be able to get a decent result in the race purely off of our reliability. I'm actually going to use this opportunity to start developing for the season and we're going to start off with an engine because that will be very important. Our car is pretty much the worst everything which is a little bit disappointing again but we're going to start off with top speed plus 20. That's all we can do. It's going to cost 1.5 million. It's going to take 13 days but let's get that developing and hopefully we'll be able to use it in the next race. So here we are. We are actually on the day of the first Grand Prix this season and as you'll be able to tell we didn't sign another driver so it's going to be pretty interesting julia bindala is not the best will hume is obviously a solid driver so i'm hoping that we can do relatively well we're going to jump into it and yeah try and get a decent result So, first practice session of the season. As always, I'm going to take it. I'm not going to make you guys watch because you probably don't need to. It's just going to be me trying to get a bit of knowledge for the drivers so that we can go into the race with a bit of a better setup. So, just going to jump into this and we'll be back in just a second. Practicing is over and we finished in ninth and stone dead last with Bindala. I think it's dead set that she's going to finish last in this race. Will Hume, though, is a little bit more promising. So we're here on race day and we actually did pretty good. We managed to get super soft tyres boosted and race trim. So we just chuck that on for both drivers. As I said, I'm not sure how Bindle is going to really get on here. It's going to be a struggle. I think she's definitely going to finish last. However, our setup is actually looking very good. 
almost perfect actually for Wilkeem, which is an, pretty nice to see. And Bindala doesn't really matter too much. We have our setup for the start of the race. I don't think we're going to start with a full 12 laps for Wilhelm because these tyres definitely won't make it and I don't think they will either for Bindala. So we'll start with 10 laps and let's hope we can start off well. And we're actually starting in first. I don't know why. It might be alphabetical order on names, I guess. So we're lucky with that one. Will Hume starting off in first. Bindler starting in 12th. I'm expecting definitely last place, but not sure about Will Hume. I'm optimistic. Coming to the end of the first lap, Will Humes actually started off very strongly. We've got a little bit of a gap out front. Bindo is slowly dropping down, but that was only to be expected. I really don't know how it's come to this already, but yes, we are in first. 19th 2. I think we're about to drop out of the lead though, because Rodriguez has made his way up through the field. Definitely going a lot faster than us. But still, we're putting up a very good performance at the start of this race. A couple of the other drivers have started to pit, so I feel we should probably do the same, at least for Bindler. She's up in 14th, and we're probably going to do one stint on the softs at some point. But I don't think that is just yet. In fact, no, we will. We'll do a stint on the softs now. Fill the car up to the maximum 12 laps. Hopefully, nearly get as much of that as we possibly can. And let's get into it. And we've actually just been extremely, extremely unlucky. The safety car has come out as soon as we went past the pit straight. So that's kind of done over Will Hume. Rodriguez did pit. So he's going to be right behind us already. And this is possibly the worst thing that actually could have happened at this time in the race. I don't want to fix any brakes or anything at the moment. And this has really not helped us at all. As you can see, pretty much everyone on the whole entire grid has pitted. Rodriguez is back behind us as well, and this pit stop's going to drop us right down to the bottom of the grid. So, it's completely screwed us over, to be completely honest. The only thing I guess we can do is use this opportunity to fix a load of our components that are looking a bit risky, because I think we're going to be at the back, whatever happens here. So here we go into the pits. We're going to drop down a ton of places here, basically to the back of the grid, which really is extremely disappointing. If we caught that a bit better, we would have been easily out the front. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. Bindala has just come through to us on the radio, and she's got a problem with her gearbox at the moment. It's down to 19%, so we're going to have to fix that at some point later on, I imagine. We are just past the halfway point in the race and people are starting to pit for extremely long pit stops. So I'm imagining that it's because their cars are not very reliable. As we get a warning for Bindler, not very reliable. So they're having to pit for obviously the correct uh, fixes and bits like that. So hopefully this is where we make our places back up with Will Hume at least. Um... So yeah, we're, we're going to continue on with that and hopefully make up the places that we lost earlier on. On the 20th lap of the race now, Bindler is sitting in 17th after the mega pit stop and Hume is in 4th. We're going to be pitting him in just a bit. We're going to fix a couple of bits on the car as well, most likely the suspension and the brakes. I think we're going to try and leave the gearbox till the end of the race. Might be a bit close, but we're going to give it a go anyway. So, we're currently sitting in fourth. We're going to pit at the end of this lap. We will be able to go to the end of the race as well, hopefully on one set of soft tyres. And I'm really hoping that someone else or some of the other drivers will need to pit for repairs. So, now we are jumping into this pit stop, or at least what we want to do. We're going to chuck him on a pair of softs. We could actually do some super softs. So, I think I will do that, seeing as they are the faster tyre. 
We'll fuel him up till the end of the race, which would be 8.37 laps. And we are going to fix the suspension and... Should we fix the suspension? I don't know. Eight laps. We're going to fix the suspension and the brakes. It's going to be a long pit stop. But I think from what I just saw on the screen, I think he said Rodriguez retired. And he has, so... Who knows what we're going to get on with here. Let's just hope it's a good pit stop. It all looks pretty good so far. We're probably going to lose our fifth and sixth place. But overall, we're still looking pretty good. And someone else has retired in front of us too. So we're back up to fourth place. We're just about to come on to our 24th lap. Uh, probably approaching the 25th lap very soon as we just have there. And we are actually catching up third place. He's just up the road from us. First place is actually behind us on the track. So probably going to be getting lapped soon. Bindala is in 11th currently, but we're just going to pit her now, and then she'll have a sprint to the end for the last five laps. We're not going to do any of her parts, but she's doing pretty good actually in 11th. So as you'll be able to see, we've just got a warning about Will Hume's gearbox. It's down on 15%, and I'm not sure that would actually survive four or five laps, and I'm not sure where fifth place is. See, he's there, so and fourth place actually. We're ahead of Nightingale. I don't really want to push that to the end, so I might actually come in and fix it. In fact, I think I'm going to. I really don't want to take the risk here. We may as well change tyres as well. We've got enough fuel. It's going to take 22 seconds overall, if it works out, that is. Fourth place is in the pits behind us, so it's going to be close between us two. But then we'll be on completely fresh tyres, so I reckon we might be able to just about do it. So here we are in the pits, the tyres went well, the gearbox is going to take a while, I'm hoping that we can hold this out, I think we've just been lapped actually, but it was very good and I think we're definitely going to come out in third place. This could be interesting, I've just noticed on the map, second place has come in for a pit stop and it was a very short one actually, it's already coming out so I don't think we're going to be able to catch up and he's just retired as soon as he came out. Okay, I'll take that, we're up into second place I believe, yes we are. If only first place would retire as well. I can't see it happening, but you never know. We finally made it onto the final lap of the race, and unless first place retires now, we're probably going to come home in second, which is incredible considering the situation that we had being done over with the safety car as well. First place has won the race. We're coming around the final corner, and we've got second, which is fantastic. And even more surprising, Bindala. Yes, Bindala. Half a star, 12th place. I'll take that. That's fantastic. What a result. Who would have thought after all of that that we come home in second place? Unless anything happens in scrutineering and we move up. I can't see it myself, but second place is a fantastic result from today. And yeah, second place, 12th place as well. So, what a result. And here we are again on the podium. Who would have thought it in our second season? Our car's still the worst on the grid pretty much. And we're already sitting in second place in the championship. So that was a decent race for money there. We made over a million, which makes a change from last year. However, we do need to sign another driver. And they're probably going to want quite a lot of money. So we'll just have to wait and see how that affects our finances per race. In other news, as you probably would have just seen, our engine has been built. So we can start working on the reliability of that in just a moment. Seeing as we still have money as well. I might start working on some other components for our car. We still have stock rear wings and front wings. So I could work on anything really. I might work on a gearbox. We're actually not the worst in that for once. So I could do that. However, I think I'm actually going to work on some brakes and just get our deceleration up. We'll be done miles before the race. So we could probably get two of those done for both our drivers. As you can probably guess, our scouting facility has been built wherever that is yes there we go the first building of many to come on this site and we've got 31 new drivers that have appeared so i guess it's time to take a look at what there is so just before we go our brakes have been developed i'm actually gonna create a new bit of suspension that'll be done before our next race as well which is pretty good i think i'm just gonna work on 
medium speed corners so that'll be up to 150 it'll be done 11 days before the race so we should be able to develop it probably a little bit we still have enough money for it as well and yeah i think we'll work on that the engine is going well we'll get that up to about 65 maybe 70 percent and then that should be good for the next race ideally i can work on the brakes i've just developed as well maybe get that up to about 50 and then we should be looking pretty good to be honest in terms of our drivers i do need to get someone relatively soon but also i need to get someone with good marketability because the money that we get from sponsors is incredibly important and we wouldn't be able to get deals such like this if we don't have another very good driver so i'm going to do that next time out i think we're actually going to leave it here for today i hope you did enjoy our pre-season and all of that so if you did enjoy remember to drop a like on the video Leave me any comments, tell me anything you think I should do, any new approach to predator racing. Remember to subscribe if you're new and I will see you all on the next video.